leukoterioscium slash leukoterichondrium. So we see, as I said, the nasal septum here formed by cartilage. This is the, the um, septal cartilage. Okay? And if we go laterally, we observe the concha. And there you can see how the bone, that's um, compact bone that we see right here, compact bone, and we can see now that this compact bone is going to form a scroll. It scrolls around. So this is basically one of the concha. Okay? And then, as I said, covered by a bone is covered now by a periosteum, a periosteal lining. And this periosteal lining now tends to where, they, where we can see this separation, this is artificial separation, mechanical trauma that has caused it to separate. The periosteum tends to go with the mucosa. But let's not get carried away with that. Let's look at some general features of the nasal cavity. One, the septum. Okay, lined by the mucosa that we see here. We also observe that there are these um, scroll shaped structures, and we see these are the concha. Okay. Then when we look at the epithelium, the lining epithelium, this lining epithelium is going to be respiratory epithelium. And that respiratory epithelium is what? Pseudostratified columna ciliated with So there we see now the uh, respiratory epithelium right here. And the cilia, we're going to look at a number of different slides, but the cilia here are not very well preserved. Okay? Their spaces, and these spaces are occupied primarily by our goblet cells. Okay? So this, for example, this flask-shaped space that I'm seeing right here, these flask-shaped spaces are where, this is really where mucus has been washed out. Okay? Alright? So that's where the mucus has been washed out. No. What we note is that the underlying lamina propria is very vascular. Look at that there. And you can see this is a sinusoidal space. Okay? So in the nasal cavity, there is what is called erectile tissue. Okay? There is erectile tissue. But it is not true cavernous tissue. But erectile tissue in the nasal cavity. And um, you may think this strange. But um, when one gets, not everybody, but sometimes when people get very sexually excited, then they have difficulty in breathing. The nose becomes very what? Congested. But you haven't reached that stage in life yet. But um, when it comes, um, you may experience these things. And basically what is happening is that these spaces are becoming very, very filled with blood. And it is no very what? difficult to breathe, but I know that, you know, X, Y, and Z. So, these are, they are a lot of what, these vascular spaces. So, the nasal cavity mucosa is what? Highly vascular, vascularized, and there, there is a lot of, um, these sinusoidal, sinusoids, vascular sinusoids in there. And then, as I was looking at it also, I noticed, um, let me put it back down to low power, as I was looking here, so there's a number of, of blood vessels that are going to be going to the nasal cavity. So the nasal cavity, in fact, that's the nasal septum. And the nasal septum, interestingly, is very, very, very vascular. And there is an area, especially on it called Kisselbach or Little's area. And Little's area or Kisselbach's area has five arteries going to it. Okay? So there are five arteries going to Kisselbach or to this area. And in that area, very interestingly, is a structure which I don't see here. It is a rare fellow to see. But this is what really interested me was this structure right here. Okay? So the nasal cavity has a lot of this also. And as I saw it, saw it, and then we're going to, I said, my gosh, look at this. One of the features of the nasal cavity. Highly vascularized and many nerves. So glands, we have not yet dealt with the glands, but it's highly innovative, very richly innovative. And there's a nerve right here. So this is a nerve just sort of cut tangent, tangentially. So the nerve is making a little curve, and that's a nerve there. Okay? So the nasal cavity is one. The mucosa is 
highly vascularized, erectile type tissue, but not cavernous tissue as you find in the penis. Okay? Two, highly richly innervated, so there are a lot of nerves and nerves going through the nasal cavity. Okay? Now, just let's get back for a moment to the vascularity of this nasal septum. That vascularity, as I said, converges about five major arteries as it's going to converge onto an area known as Little's area. About 90% of nose bleeding children is from Little's area. And right around that point there is something called a vomero nasal organ or the organ of Jacobson. Did you do that? Have you done histology of the nasal cavity yet? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very good. So there you would have encountered the vomero nasal organ or the organ of Jacobson. Now when I was a student, it was taught, believe it or not, that it did not exist in humans and it's nothing to do with humans and blah, 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 blah. Okay? And it's only phylogenetically, for example, say in the reptilians, etc. And where is all the modern research now going in Germany? In Germany, they are pushing out piles of papers on the homo nasal organ of Jacobson. And it seems to be very much to do with pheromones. So males and females tend to give out certain what? Odors. And this seems to have a lot to do with the homo nasal organ and sometimes described that the 13th cranial nerve goes there. Do you know what the 13th cranial nerve is? You have me reading. Roy, yeah, really. All right. So very interesting that that vomer nasal organ has a special innovation. All right, and very much involved we think with what with pheromones. So we have, as I said, in the nasal cavity one a nasal septum. That the nasal septum has a very thick mucosa on it. That the mucosa is going to be covered predominantly by respiratory epithelium. That the underlying connective tissue, the lamina propria, has what? Lots of blood vessels. Very, 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 there we see. Look at that. All of this is what? Blood vessels. Look at that. Blood vessel here. See there, right? Blood vessels. Sinusoids. All of this is all what? Sinusoid. So very, 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 very rich in blood vessels. Vetch nerves. A lot of nerves to the nasal cavity. Not only is it richly innervated in terms of the somatic nerves, but there is a rich autonomic nervous system going there, sympathetic and parasympathetic, and this is going to be going to the gland. So we know, for example, when we get various sort of allergic to X, Y, and Z, then there you see a lot of glandular tissues, ceromucous glands. Okay? So many of you have had cock holes and all sorts of stuff, and you're just blowing out endless amount of mucus. So it's not only richly, um, it's not only highly vascularized, it's not only richly innervated, but there are a lot of, there is a lot of glandular tissue in the nasal cavity. Alright? In the area of the olfactory epithelium, which we have not reached to yet, that has some special gland known as Bowman's gland. Okay? But there you see the underlying connective tissue, that's another nerve in cross-section, sorry, in, in an LS, that's an LS of a nerve. Um, so there we see the perichondrium right here, and there we see the mucosa, lots of blood vessels, and there we see, now with these glands, what are they? Primarily the ones at the tip of the pointer. Are these primarily cells? See, I didn't have to ask the question. So you see the potential is there to get marrow. Okay, so this is what? Primarily producing a, this is going to be producing a watery type secretion. So nerves, a lot of um, postganglionic parasympathetic nerves are going to be going towards these glands to give secretor motor function. Coming primarily from the superior salivatory nucleus, that's where we're going to find the preganglionic cell bodies. And the postganglionic cell bodies will be in what's known as the pterygopalatine ganglion. Okay? So the preganglionic cell bodies, parasympathetic, will be in the superior cell 